So what we will do is uh, have Arish introduce two excellent teams. Two more excellent teams. And be amazed. They were actually working not only with the design part and the fabrication part, but they have been working with plastic molding guys um, to be able to try to take it to the point where it is designing for their import, uh, their use. So, come on, guys, tell your story. Hello, all. Uh, Harish here again. Uh, so, I'll tell you a story. Five months back, we had a wedding in a small room in Sackett Hall, where our mechanical engineering department is. The wedding is between two technologies: 3D printing and plastic injection molding. And they live happily together if we can make the tools for plastic injection molding in very short span using 3D printing technology. And these four folks over here are, uh, that, uh, are traveling with those two technologies in these five months to see how this wedding could go and turn up into a good startup company. And today here, they're here to present the story of those five months and let you guys know how, how this potential in 3D printing disrupted the manufacturing time for making those tools for plastic injection molding. Here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you IMTM. Thank you, Harish. Uh, like Harish said, we are IMDM. I'm Raymond Ott with David Powell, Jack Ashby, and Armand Newton. We came together, like Harish said, five months ago, bringing together various experiences in, in uh, the additive manufacturing and component design and the, uh, and the uh, market for injection molding as well as heat transfer technologies to form IMDM, Innovative Mold Design and Manufacturing. Our concept was to take, was to take this particular part that you see and produce a, and produce a mold using added manufacturing out of 17.4 pH steel. Our concept was that we would use conformal cooling channels in order to improve the quality, time, and overall, f overall finish of the part. The conformal channels themselves allow for the part to cool very evenly and uniformly, speeding up the time and reducing flaws in standard practice, such as warpage. Some of the, uh, big, some of the big points here are that the cycle time is significantly reduced by the use of these conformal cooling channels and time is money. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jack. Hi, I'm Jack Ashby. Um, as part of our team, I did uh, a lot of the simulation side of it. Um, so with these two images right here, I'll start off with those. So these are the heat flux from the part. So if you don't know what heat flux is, it's just the rate that the heat is leaving the part. So the one on the bottom is with our cooling channels that we designed, and the one at the top is without. So as you can see, with our cooling channels, you have a nice uniform heat leaving the part. Um, so our key consideration that we are going with is getting the heat to leave the part. Um, so with the conformal cooling channels, because um, 3D printing, you do whatever geometry you want. It allows you to contour to the part itself, uh, mostly specifically to this uh, section down here is a uh, semicircle, so we followed that curve um, along that to get the best cooling. Um, the major attributes that we used to create this prototype, obviously, were the cooling channels um, and the gate that we are connecting to for the previous mold base that we are going to put our mold into. Um, and we fabricated this on the concept laser um, in the MIG group's lab. 
Uh, the material that we used was a water atomized 17.4 pH steel. Uh, it's very cheap, dollars for a pound. Um, it's very, it's came out pretty good, uh, an okay finish, surface finish. We could also use a gas atomized powder, would give a better surface finish and density. But if you're looking at saving money to create a mold, the water atomized powder would be the way to go. Okay, with the uh, alternatives at the beginning, where we before we knew we had to do uh, product F with the touch of gray comb, we were considering with uh, other small parts, especially with the the bill plate where our constraints. But um, I mean, we also were in the designs. Also, we uh, on the pictures we were we had an eight millimeter diameter coin channels. Then with uh, recommendations from MRA, who we were working with, they wanted us to uh, get uh, develop more uh, more paths for the water to go back and forth to, like I said before, to uh, even out the heat flux. So uh, right now, this is what it currently looks like in our, our prototype. Uh, uh, with 3D printing, you can, uh, you can make the conformal cooling channels by with traditional machining. So, uh, which good thing for 3D printing. And uh, we also were considering ejector pins, but with the bill plate and with time, we was not be able to do that. And um, since uh, and with other ideas, with other small parts, with the the part given to us by Emory, we had to follow that, follow up, do that. Uh, so. So all things considered, we are very satisfied with our end product, our beta prototype. Uh, the material properties, the quality of the mold, and the simulation results. Uh, moving forward, our next steps would be to explore how to test this on an actual manufacturing basis. Uh, so far, the closest we've been able to come is our simulations. We've done close work with Amray through the whole process. They've been great. Uh, I don't know if any of them made it out today, but couldn't have done it without them. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so continuing, we would like to explore what it would take to actually use an injection molding machine and do some stress tests. <clears throat> uh, we feel strongly that our product would save a great deal of money for any companies that were interested in using our molds. Uh, we've reduced manufacturing costs tremendously as well as reducing lead time. Um, the, <laughs> the market is growing, the market's changing. We're, uh, we're excited to be a part of it. So, any questions? Okay.